Hello and welcome to another Unreal Engine video tutorial. In this video, you will learn how to enable clicking or touching on actors using the new enhanced input system of Unreal Engine. By the end of the video, I will also show you how to create a custom click channel, specifically for mouse clicks or touch inputs. As always, let's create base folders for our project. Right click and from the input menu, select input action. I'll call it IA click. Later, I will create another action for touch input in case you need to separate them for different functionalities. I don't want this action to consume any lower priority actions, so I will disable that. This is all we need to do in this asset. Now, just duplicate this asset and change its name to IA touch. We don't need to change anything in this asset as we already disabled the consume lower priority. The next step is to map these actions to the actual keys. So again, go to the input menu and this time create an input mapping context. I will call it IMC general, but you can call it whatever you like. Open the new asset and add a new mapping. Assign the click action to that. And now, it is time to assign an actual button. If you click on the keyboard icon, it turns yellow and the engine will automatically assign the next button you press to this action. It also works for controllers and keyboards. For instance, let me press the spacebar this time. This is a very handy feature and you don't have to scroll over buttons to find the button you need. Add another mapping input for the touch action. And from the list, find the touch one. The enhanced input system gives us excellent control over managing buttons. We can add several trigger and modifier helpers to each action. Describing them needs a whole video, and if you are interested, let me know in the comment section, and I will create a dedicated video for them. To enable these actions for users, I will assign them to the player controller class. You can also assign them to the character class, but keep in mind if you assign an action to both of them, the action in the player controller class has priority. To assign actions, just open the player controller class, then drag and drop actions to it. If you open an action, you can see you have lots of different executable nodes and variables. They are self-explanatory, but I will show you a quick example. Before we go and test them, let me create a very basic pawn class for the player. I will just add a camera component to the class. I don't like this long name for my root component, so to fix that, I will just add a scene component and make it the root component of the class. Also, I will rotate the camera a little bit so we can see the ground better. And the last piece of the puzzle, we need to add these player controller and pawn classes in a game mode class. All we need to change inside this class is just select our pawn and controller class as default. Go to your map and open the world setting, then change the game mode override to the new game mode class we just made. If you don't have the game mode class, you can find it in the settings menu. Now let's click on play. If I click on the ground, nothing happens. That was something I expected. Open the player controller class because a very important step is to tell the enhanced input system to consider our input mapping context. To keep things clear, I will create a new function for that. We need to call this function at the begin play event. Inside the new function, search for the enhanced input subsystem. It's always good practice when working with objects to make sure they are valid. Now, on the input subsystem, call the add mapping context and select our input mapping asset for that. Now, hopefully, if we go and play again, we should get some output this time. 
As you can see, as soon as I press my left mouse button, it prints the triggered message. And when I release it, it prints the completed message. Let me disable the triggered message so you can see the completed message better. You see the completed message after I release the left mouse button, but you can easily modify this calling method by adding triggers and modifiers to the input mapping asset as I said earlier. As you can see, there are many options you can choose from. For instance, I want the triggered node to be called only when I release the mouse button, the same as the completed message we saw before. Let me reconnect the print wire again. As you can see, this time I don't get spammed by the mouse click button, and it only triggers once the button is released. So I will keep this trigger for the click action. We can add a trigger for the touch action too. For instance, you want the event to be triggered only after the user taps, which means a short touch within the threshold time. Again, let me know in the comment section if you are interested in a dedicated video for these trigger conditions and modifiers. Let's go back to the player controller class. Before we continue, let's enable some useful options in the class. The first option is to show the mouse cursor to the user, which is very important. We need to enable the click events too. These last two options will allow actors to call hover events, which you can enable if they are useful for your project. Let's test again. As you can see, this time we can see the mouse cursor, but we don't have any data about the actor I clicked on. We can create a new function to get the actor at the player click or touch location. I want this function to be pure so we don't need to call it by connecting wires, and since I don't write to any variable in this function, as an optimization step, we can make it const. Right-click on the graph and search for get hit result under cursor. You will find two options, by channel and by objects. I will go for the channel so we can easily assign them to the actors. As you can see, the default channel is visibility, but we will add our custom channel in a minute. Now, break the hit result. For outputs from this function, we can set a boolean as the first variable to check if something is found or not. The second variable can be the actor we hit. You can change this to any other class you need, and then by using a cast node, change the hit actor to the class that you are looking for. Now, as the final step, we can call this function after the triggered event. If something is found, I want to print its name. Let's test this. As you can see, I can click on the floor. To make this more interesting, let's add some cubes to the level. This time when I click on the boxes, I will get their names on the screen. Now, for testing purposes. If I disable the visibility channel on one of the boxes, you can see we can't click on that box anymore. It only prints the floor when I click on the box, because my click was not captured by the box and was detected by the floor as the next object. My next suggestion for you is to create a new channel dedicated to clicks or touch inputs. So, go to your project settings and from the collision menu, add a new trace channel. Give it a name and set the default response to ignore because by default we don't want this channel to be captured by actors. Now, back to the player controller class. Press the compile button to refresh the class and change the trace channel to the click. If you don't see the new channel, you may need to restart your project. If you run the game this time, we can't click on any object. So, in order for an actor to be clickable, we need to manually set the click channel to block.
Now, run the game for the last test. You will see the click button works on the boxes perfectly, but is disabled on the floor mesh. Thank you for watching this video. Please support my channel by subscribing and liking my videos will help these videos to reach more people. Your support helps me bring more content to you.